Good afternoon. It's pretty windy up here on the Tank Verde Ridge, and I'm going to break here to talk about a related anime. The boy who saw the wind. The Boy Who Saw the Wind, or Kazuyomita Shonen, is a fantasy theatrical anime movie. It's set in an alternate world, technologically similar to the early 20th century. Emin is a young boy with some very special powers. Don't let the haircut fool you, he's a boy and the title character, though at the start he doesn't yet see the wind. He does have some other unusual abilities, though. He can talk with animals and heal injuries and create little bubbles of light energy to play with. Emin's father, a brilliant scientist, thinks his son's powers are fascinating, especially the little energy bubbles which he's studying. But they work under the oppressive rule of the Golden Snake Empire and its despotic ruler, Brannock, who turns all of Dad's discoveries into weapons. The family tries to flee across the border, but things go badly and Ammon ends up an orphan on the run. So, after a bit of daring do, Ammon miraculously reaches the ancient and mysterious Hard Island, where an eagle teaches him that if he tries really hard, he can see the wind and use it to fly. A bear teaches Ammon to fish and eat berries, and tells him that he's one of the ancient wind people, a now-vanished race that used to live on that island. Since Ammon's parents weren't wind people, he must be a heck of a genetic throwback. These animals Ammon can speak with are remarkably knowledgeable about current events and political theory, but neither the eagle nor the bear bother to tell Ammon a few important safety details about this flying stuff, and so he soon ends up with the sea people. They don't have any special powers, they just live on the shore and fish in the sea. Like the ancient wind people, they live in simple harmony with nature, taking from the sea and land only what they need to live. It's here among the fishermen that Ammon meets Maria, a bright and spunky youngster of the clan. Maria's mom is hardworking and cheerful and kindly takes Ammon into her household. Maria and Ammon get along swimmingly. Oide. Of course, Brannock's ruthless lust for power isn't going to spare Ammon or the Sea People for very long. The Golden Snakes want to rule the whole world, and they want Ammon's power for a new superweapon. The youngster is going to have to face the evil tyrant from his past for the sake of his new homeland and for his new best friend, Maria. Looking at the boy who saw the wind, comparisons to the early works of Hayao Miyazaki are inevitable. In character designs, there are full round faces with clean lines and simple shading, and also with plain and simple clothing. Brannock has a strange flying battleship of interesting design but dubious aerodynamics. The countryside abounds in lovely lush vegetation, streams and waterfalls, and puffy white clouds drift through the clear blue sky. And the theme is distinctly the love of nature versus the ills of technology. It's hard not to compare this to Naushka or Lapida, even if they were made ten years before. The animation is from Brainsbase. It's full motion theatrical quality throughout. Except for a big overhead of the city crowd scene at the very opening that clearly uses some computer assistance to achieve massive concurrent motion, the rest of the movie has the deliberate look of being hand-drawn in 1990 instead of 2000 when it was actually made. I happen to think all that's a good thing. For the characters, only Ammon and Maria get quiet time to develop so that we care about them. Ammon's time with the sea people is among the movie's finest. Ammon is kindly curious and confused about his new abilities, but eager to learn. He's also determinedly loyal to Maria and his friends. Maria has a quiet bravery that lets her stand up for herself. Like Ammon, she's resilient to tragedy. In the face of adversity, she can put on a happy face for the benefit of others. Alas, as a villain, Brannock is just a cardboard cutout, a nasty fascist cliché. He wears a permanent scowl and a very stiff uniform, and even has militaristic theme uniform. He even tramples on flowers. Too many other supporting characters come and go without giving us time to get to know them before the story asks us to mourn them. Ammon's parents are gone in the first ten minutes. Ochia, who then becomes the Golden Snake's new head of weapons development, is the closest thing we have to an ambivalent character, but even she ends up doing the classic evil mad scientist laugh by the end. 
The soundtrack offers some excitement, some tragedy, some heroism, and some nice magic moments, aided by a collection of old-school inspiring melodic orchestral themes by Tomiya Terashima. The score has a couple of good pieces that add to the enjoyment of the story and is serviceable throughout. The Boy Who Saw the Wind is based on a book by author and environmentalist C.W. Nichol, a Japanese citizen born in Wales who also wrote a book about his time as an Ethiopian game warden. He's probably why the anime sometimes comes off a little preachy. The overall story has minor pacing problems. There are too many bases to cover. Their homeland, Hard Island, the Sea People, the Resistance, and some periodic visits inside the Golden Snake's evil fortress. A bear needs to give Ammon and us a rather dry history lecture about the wind people, and there's one misplaced exposition right in the heart of the movie's climax to disrupt the natural flow of it. The story occupies a twilight area between a young boy's fantasy story and a violent, tragic drama. The young may like its pleasant scenery, the boy who flies and talks to cute animals, they'll enjoy the heroic plotline, but kids may find some of the violence, torture, and brutality of the Golden Snakes a little disturbing. On the other hand, adults may find the basic story fair enough, but wince at a succession of plot developments based on newfound abilities almost indistinguishable from miracles, because the anime doesn't provide any foreshadowing or preparation for them. A voice in the back of your head will complain that if Ammon could do that, why didn't he do it earlier? Okay, Ammon is learning his newfound heritage as a wind boy, but he seems to discover everything just when the plot demands it. The final deus ex machina dilutes the story's conclusion. Despite those flaws, The Boy Who Saw the Wind is a pleasant, well-animated movie with a couple of likable characters and a handful of memorable scenes. I give it four stars because I enjoyed its better moments in spite of its flaws and unconvincing ending. If you don't mind a little echo preaching and plotting magic, you may appreciate it too. This movie hasn't had a U.S. release, though Sony's Region 2 DVD thoughtfully comes with English subtitles. It also comes with some music videos from the score. Thanks for watching.